As athletes from 66 nations around the world gather together, South Africa returns to a celebration of sport with a truly global perspective. Join BBC Television and Radio 5 Live for exclusive coverage of the 15th Commonwealth Games. Opening tomorrow evening on BBC One. And some of the British hopes for the 1994 Commonwealth Games are profiled in the new issue of Radio Times, which also contains complete listings for all television and major satellite channels. Take your partners for a Viennese night at the BBC Proms tonight, 10.20 on BBC One. Now on BBC One, bouquets or barbs. Chris Searle's in the chair to welcome both. Comedy has come in for a severe trashing this week. Billy Connolly and his... Filthy language. ...will come to, not to mention the... Tasteless rubbish. ...of the real McCoy. But this takes the biscuit, I think, for sheer elegance. Punt and Dennis is about as funny as a pair of camel hair underpants on a midsummer's day in the middle of the Gobi Desert. Jim Coleman of Farmer Hans from the middle of the Gobi Desert. If you have difficulty hearing and your television's got CFAX, you can get subtitles for this programme and many others. Full marks for public service. Well... Eight out of ten, it seems. You'd need to be able to read at the speed of light to follow the continually moving print and also keep finding your last seen word on the screen as it shifts position on the next spoken sentence. It's far too fast to follow. A plea from Mrs J Jenkins of Liverpool on behalf of her mother. On the other hand... We say, hands off, you hearing bigots. We've nothing but praise for the subtitling unit. Well, thank you, Mr Hewitt of Rochdale, but how do you know if a programme is going to have subtitles in the first place? The answer lies in the top right-hand corner of your screen. But did you know? 888. No. How am I supposed to know it? I don't know what it means. It's nothing to do with time or latitude or... No, I can't really guess. Yeah, it's something to do with subtitles, isn't it? Spot on. 888 is a page on CFAX which provides a subtitling service for hearing impaired viewers. And it's here at the BBC subtitling unit that the words are added to the pictures. Subtitling is a much more difficult process than people would think. It isn't simply a case of typing in the words. We want to retain the flavour of the programme. So if there's comedy in the programme, if it's drama, we want to make sure that our viewers get everything that the hearing viewer gets. We estimate it would take one person a whole day to produce about 20 minutes worth of subtitles. The Prime Minister is meeting his senior colleagues in... Subtitling live programmes, such as the news, provides the biggest challenge. And on some stories, the captions are typed as the words are broadcast. This job is called steno captioning. Steno captioning is a form of specialised shorthand, where each word is typed in not letter by letter on an ordinary shorthand, but word by word. It's a similar system that they use in court reporting. They have to type extremely quickly. Someone like Jeremy Paxman may speak up to 250 words per minute. So the stenographer has to paraphrase what he's saying in order to keep up. So, Mrs Jenkins, that's the answer to your complaint. And whether they're live or not, the BBC pledges that by 1998, half of its programmes will have CFAX subtitles. Oh, she kept walking in through that door. And when she sat down and started shouting like you used to. And talking of EastEnders... I'm 15 years old and a great fan of EastEnders, and I'm just about fed up with the boring old whingers who constantly complain about it being violent and crude. I just wish they'd shut up and let others enjoy this quality drama instead of moaning. Haven't they got anything better to do? OK, OK, but before this turns into a soap script in its own right, let's get to the point. I wonder if any of the people who complain about EastEnders have actually lived in or had any experience of London's East End. And if they did, what would they think of it? Well, there's one way to find out. Take a camera to the real East End and ask. Puppy, it's a lot better. It's on three times a week. And I still watch it on Sunday as well. Is Gail Boris? I sometimes miss Mondays because it's on like later. It's too depressing now. It's not fun anymore. Always rowing. I go in the pub there for a drink. The rush is alone. One of the East Enders, they go in the pub. Everybody wants to fight each other. 
it's like true life really. It's not like it's like where we live, it's around here. They're trying to put too much excitement into it and too much scandal, which just don't happen. I feel that it more or less covers issues that do happen most of the time. All their storylines are either of murders, robbery, rape, oomph. You know, I mean it needs a bit more livening up. And then that'll be senders. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. In the last but one programme, we introduced our new email address for the people who want to write to us by internet on their computers. The response has exceeded all our expectations, but there's been one surprising spin-off, which could only happen by electronic mail. Someone gave our email address to a worldwide electronic news system. The result is that we've been getting email from all sorts of places, including the States, where people have been watching the BBC-NBC co-production Michael Moore's TV Nation. To POV at BBC NC stop ORG stop UK. That's us. I'm a viewer in the US, but would like to say that I thoroughly enjoy the show TV Nation and hope that the NBC BBC joint venture will continue indefinitely. Thank you. No return address, sadly, not even one in Earth language or earthly or even earthy language, which brings me to Billy Connolly. Ian Jowett had a hernia operation came home with strict instructions to take it easy, no sudden movements, sat down in front of the telly, and what did he watch? Billy Connolly's World Tour of Scotland. That's all right, harmless enough. Oh, no, the said programme should carry a government health warning. It had me in stitches, and nearly out of mine. Ouch. In fact, that was where the compliments stopped. Mr Connolly's tour was a travelogue interspersed with film of his performances given in front of live audiences, and it was the live performances that provoked a severe ticking off from you. Mr. Carter of Bristol. I thought what a foul-mouthed person he is. I also thought how totally irresponsible the BBC has become to screen it. Mrs. Lucas of Deal. This ignorant man used F-words in practically every sentence. Mrs. O'Donnell from Dorking. Can anyone explain to me why the BBC edits some films for strong language and then proceed to produce programmes that are absolutely full of it? And so on. There's a double standard here, isn't there? If the people who were laughing their heads off at his live show were to hear him using such language on a television programme, they'd probably be the first to complain. I have to say the language didn't bother me. For him, it was obviously a way of talking to his audience and a way he felt they would talk to each other. And I suppose he should know. I'd show you what I mean, but uh, it's not quite the nine o'clock threshold. So here's our specially cleaned up back somehow. And finally, to a programme which received universal acclamation from viewers and critics alike. Maria Simpson rang from Cornwall. The best piece of television I've watched for a long time. Moving and emotional. And Mrs Butler wrote from Chatham. Jane Horrocks' performance on this excellent production could not be allowed to pass without comment. I cried my eyes out. The performance in question was Suffer the Little Children by Jack Emery. Deborah, played by Jane Horrocks, is explaining to the police why she killed her seven-month-old son and then tried to commit suicide. Her son had a horribly painful wasting disease. Instead of just letting him die, she helped him on his way. Dr. Peter said that he didn't think that we should try as hard, that we should just let it happen faster. I said, I can't do that. I've got to make him as comfortable as I can. Cos, like, he were a nice baby, you know, in between his do's. He smiled and shouted and watched the telly and really took notice of everything. Jane Horrocks in Suffer the Little Children. We end with the BBC proms, not because anyone's written to us about them, but because they're there and they're good. Especially this, a moment from Sibelius' First Symphony, played by the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by young Pascal Tortelier. Goodbye. comment on BBC programmes, please write to Points of View, BBC Television, London, W12 7RJ. Phone or fax 081 576 4560. You think murder was funny? <laughs>
Ruth Rendell's A Fatal Inversion, Sunday, 5 past 9, on BBC World. Grace really is under fire on BBC Two shortly when the man from the revenue causes her some taxing problems. The biology of love explored in Desmond Morris's fascinating portrait of the human species. The human animal in half an hour.